A very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the late edition of Logan's European Outlook for Saturday the 4th of March. Quick look at the current temperatures as a recording at 10 past 6 in the evening and, uh, you know, relatively, relatively, ah, can you say it's cold? Can you say it's mild? I don't know. Um, temperatures generally almost uh, uniform across the board. 6 at Altmahara, we've got a 6 down near the south coast, a few degrees either side of that. Um, up and down the country, as you can see here. Current um, precipitation, this is the latest radar of um, weather online. And you can see here a peppering of showers across the north and the eastern half of the UK. We still have, a, a, you know, generally the coldest air north of the British Isles, but that will change over the next 24 hours or so. We're looking actually real quick at the European temperatures at this moment in time you can see here that we have got a you know relatively cool uh, across the north and eastern half of the continent we've got the generally mild across the southwest and um and yeah we are going to see the cold coming down in the next 24 hours or so in the you know, via two areas of low pressure so uh, this is the current setup of the GFS, so it's all eyes on the snow situation this upcoming week. Uh, we will have uh, two uh, scenarios in terms of distribution and deliverance of that snowfall. We are going to see initially northerly winds bringing in the snow showers across the north as well as the east of the British Isles. And then our eyes dr uh, get turned to the, the Atlantic during the middle portion of the week here and uh, that may produce some snow in more southern portions of the UK. So this is the latest GFS here. You can see that area of high pressure uh, deflating, drifting slightly to the west. There's feature number one coming down. This is actually on Sunday as opposed to Saturday. So let's get back to the right chart here. So yeah, area of high pressure still at 1032 millibars. I think the pressure now here at the house has finally dropped below 10 30 millibars that's been the case pretty much all week which is amazing also recorded the first rain in a week here at the house as well um thanks to those showers coming in so we're um kind of slightly deflating the area of high pressure and what we're going to see is that high drifting a little bit further to the west as you can see here there's feature number one coming down that is going to kind of introduce something a little colder across particularly the northern half of the british isles but it will have rain associated with, we've seen it today. Uh, but behind that feature, there is a little bit of cold air coming into the fray. Then, as you can see here, these little embedded areas, these disturbances within that northerly flow coming down. What that's going to do is it's essentially going to uh, almost kind of pull some of that Arctic air down, but also it's going to enhance precipitation. So here's that main feature that I've been alluding to in the last couple of days coming down past just to the west of uh, Shetland, coming south to the east of the UK. So we're in the cold western flank of that uh, area of low pressure. And that is going to introduce that much colder air. And I'll show you the 850 temperatures in just a second. But then, of course, you can see here the boundary separating relatively milder with colder here you can see that kind of uh, mismatch of precipitation rain on that uh, leading edge, milder of course, and then colder air tucking in on the backside. We we'll see precipitation changing over the snow as the freeze level drops uh, through the course of Monday. So you can see that feature becomes a little bit deeper as it drifts south. We we'll see the snow showers piling in. Uh, across the north and the eastern half of the continent here, or the country, should I say. Uh, this is in the early portion of Tuesday, of course, with the, the hours of darkness. Freeze level even drops further. Therefore, even down the sea level, we could be seeing an accumulation of snow across particularly northern portions of the British Isles. Look at that area of low pressure. Look at how it deepens on the just on that uh, region there between i can't remember the stretch of water here but just basically on the south side of sweden northern denmark here that area of low pressure becomes a very deep feature tightens up we could see blizzard conditions across southern portions of norway sweden 
possibly even into the north of Denmark also. So that is a notable feature moving into the continent, as you can see here. This is, of course, 12 o'clock on Tuesday. We're still in that run of northerly winds here. Very cold winds at that. And then it's as we progress towards the middle portion of the week, we keep our eyes in this area of low pressure. So we've got that block now set up in place over the UK. Very cold air um, over the British Isles. And that acts like a blocker. And essentially, it kind of almost forces the track of these lows further south. And this is what happens with sudden stratospheric warmings. If you get the right block in the right place, it forces the storm track further and further south, and that is what we're seeing down at the surface with this response two weeks after the event takes place way up at 10 millibars here. So you can see what happens. We've got more embedded features within that northerly flow, enhancing potentially the snow showers across the north. Looks as if the latest run of the GFS has that area of low pressure that we were watching a couple of days ago, tracking initially across the south of Ireland, through mid Wales, through the Midlands of England. It's now further south, and this is the problem that we have. Even now, over the next day or so, until we get closer to the time frame, we do not know exactly where this area of low pressure will track. It may still be further north, may be like here, further south. Uh, that still remains open to question. The ECMWF, which we'll look at in just a second, also is further south with the track now. So the models are seeing further south uh, push of that Arctic air, which is quite interesting. So as we push towards the middle portion of the week, we've got enhancement of snow across the north, probably clear blue skies uh, elsewhere across the majority of the UK, away from that north, possibly down the eastern uh, side of England as well and over Ireland and Northern Ireland as well. Crisp day by day, very cold during the overnight period here. So you notice here these areas of low pressure tracking to the south. This is now by early Thursday morning. We've got more areas of low pressure embedded within that northerly flow. And then it's as we push right the way towards the very end of the week, the latest run of the GFS has an area of low pressure pretty deep at that. It squeezing the isobars, lots of precipitation, could be a very messy picture if this was to materialise. Could see some very um, significant wind, rain, thunder embedded within that. You notice the centre here in the west coast of Ireland, but we've got the land share of moisture rattling the way across the UK. And of course, this could be a significant snowmaker across particularly the Midlands, Eastern England, Northern England, and much of Scotland you know, with that firmly entrenched cold air in place, that feature moves through, then we're uh, seeing more systems riding in. But of course, where these areas of low pressure track is going to be critical. Do we stay in the cold air for the majority of the UK and these areas of low pressure are further south, possibly? Or they could be tracking further north like we're seeing at the moment here. So this is the GFS scenario. Let's have a look at the ECMWF. You can see here, similar idea. We've got, of course, these features coming down with the northerly flow. We introduce the cold air. That area of high pressure gets deflected to the west. And, of course, we see the enhancement of snow showers with these features coming down. Keeping our eyes out in the Atlantic as we push towards the middle portion of the week. You can see here, like the GFS, it has these areas of low pressure running further south than the previous run so it's indicating that the air mass itself is stronger it's colder and it's forcing the storm track further south this is by the time we get to the second half of the upcoming work week and unlike the gfs it's indicating that the latest run of the ecmwf has this area of low pressure rather than moving up towards scotland it's actually tracking further south so the focus of heaviest snowfall would be further south with that area of low pressure and it looks as if the northern half of the british isles remains in the cold air for a lot longer this is right the way through next weekend you notice here the tracks are further south we've got an area of cold high pressure across the north so we maintain this cold theme here like i've said before my hunch is that even if we do get an introduce introduction of milder air from the atlantic i think the cold air will fight back 
based on 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 all this taking place, man jailing our station, uh, you know, response to the sudden shortage for it warming, etc., etc. We may get these surges of mild trying to push. There's going to be this battle. It's going to fight between the cold and the mild as we progress towards the end of next week. So looking at the 850 temperatures as promised here, this is off the GFS. So we're you know relatively cold now across the north and down the east coast, mild further south and what southwest. It's as that feature, that area of low pressure coming down during the course of tomorrow night in the, in the Monday morning, you notice here that this is the door opening to Arctic air. So we've got colder in place during the course of tomorrow. We've got even colder air getting transported, pulled down in the wake of this area of low pressure that originated, by the way, up towards uh, Iceland here. So we've got very colder, minus 10 or lower at 850 across the north of the UK. The majority of Scotland actually uh, sees that minus 10 isotherm running down uh, from the north here. So that is notable colder. And of course, even with sunshine, if you've got a cold enough column, the incoming solar radiation fights against that cold, tries to eat away at the cold. But if the if the column is has got a, a cold enough depth, you know you can fight against the solar incoming solar radiation, and actually the temperatures really struggle to respond much above the freezing mark. So that's going to be interesting to see daytime temperatures. How cold does it get? Or remain during the day and then of course at night time how cold do we get as well with snow on the ground with relatively clear skies and light winds i reckon minus 10 very plausible indeed with this type of setup and you notice here that the gfs has that cold maintaining itself through the middle portion of the week second half of the weekend we're keeping our eyes on areas of low pressure and this is the latest run of the gfs so notice its further north track allows milder air to encompass more of the UK. You notice that there, and then we've got this fight between north and between south. Looking at the ECMWF for the 850 temperatures, I would reckon that there's colder air winning the battle compared to the GFS. So we'll play it through the loop here and see here that area of low pressure delivers that punch of very cold air across the British Isles. Of course, we've got the battle with so incoming solar radiation increasing in strength at this time of the year. We're increasing the length of daylight, of course, as well. But when you get a cold enough air mass, it can fight against that. You notice here that we progress right the way through the course of this week. And notice here that the ECMWF has the majority of the UK remaining in that cold air. We don't have as much of an intrusion of milder and look at this here by the time we reach the end or you know towards next weekend we've got uh, some of these purples representing minus 10 minus 12 celsius at 850 across the northern half of the british isles here you know like i keep banging on the drum very interesting times and uh, certainly if if you're not a subscriber you're interested in meteorology you're interested in seeing other than just what to expect over the next couple of days I talk about the reason why this cold has, uh, you know, arrived, uh, you know, all the global aspects that come into play with regards to the forecast itself. There's a lot of content here, folks, that you do not see elsewhere. So, uh, you know, please hit that subscribe button. I do appreciate your support. And uh, I try to explain as best I can exactly what's going on here. So let's have a look at the snow prospects here. For the British Isles over the next day, several days here. So, of course, in comes these features from the north. We'll start to see the snow increasing, not just across the north. Notice here, it's the majority of it's just across the north of the UK uh, and over higher ground here. So we don't see a significant amount of snow right the way through the majority of the week um, away from, you know, the highlands, uh, for example. Then you notice here that by the time we reach the uh, end of the week and end of the weekend here that, that in uh, system that comes in from the west we do see a significant snow event but let, let's have a quick look at the ecmwf before i run out of time always run out of time at the moment because there's that many things to talk about we'll play through the loop you can see here that the snow increases and uh, yeah stay tuned we'll continue to watch this day by day 
I'll have a global weather and climate report tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.